a handful of dust. It is all that remains of a prehistoric king. A valuable archaeological find in Arizona, evidently the tomb and remains of a monarch of an unknown age. Among the most valuable discoveries ever made on the American continent from an archaeological standpoint is the tomb of a prehistoric race recently unearthed at the village of Crittenden, Arizona, right outside Florence. The workmen had penetrated at some eight feet below the surface of the ground what they took to be the stone of a soft, friable nature, but which was evidently masonry of very superior workmanship when they reached the tomb itself. This was composed of a large square blocks of stone, which was identi identified as red or rose granite. In incredible here, you look at rose granite, um, shaping and cutting rose granite, unbelievable case okay, so they're finding an ancient tomb composed of blocks of rose granite and cemented together with such skill as to at first cause the whole measuring 12 by 15 feet to appear as a solid mass. They come across a rose granite tomb that was so well cut and cemented that it looked like one giant piece of granite. The opening of this, while very difficult at the use of powder, was prohibited by Mr. Hendrickson, who, as a learned archaeologist, was placed in charge of the examination of the, by the authorities, was accomplished by night. When the interest and curiosity of the party was so great that the work was continued by lamplight till dawn, the tomb, when opened, was found to contain a gigantic image of a man lying at full length and made of clay mixed with a sort of preparation which gives it a bright blue color and a slight elasticity, the whole appearing to have been subjected to great heat. Now, we'll keep that in mind because we're going to get into the great heat. A lot of these buildings in Arizona were uh, melted, it seems. The image represents the naked figure except for a very tight girdle about the waist a pair of close-fitting sandals, and a crown on the head shaped very much like a bishop's mitre, but topped with the head of a hawk or an eagle. So you got the Egyptian eagle on top of the bishop's mitre. Now, um, you do enough um, cross-referencing with Catholicism, and you know um, it, it's going to lead you to Hermes, and that's going to lead you um, to Thoth, and you're going to see a lot of very, very amazing blendings um, in icon iconography and uh, clothing. And I love this because it, it's like the middle ground. The features are roughly molded out of an imperious cast and of a man in middle age with a prominent nose and a very wide mouth, but with cheekbones so low as to preclude all idea that the original could have been an Indian. The hands, which are as small as a woman's, and bear on the backs the head of the bird as on the crown, are crossed on the breast and hold an image about three inches long of a squatting figure, probably that of a god. The feet are also crossed, the right presenting the peculiarity of possessing a sixth toe, which the sandal is cut to bring into prominence, as if the owner had prided himself on it. Now, the sixth digits is really important. Now, they're saying that this person cut his sandal and had his sixth toe shown as prominence. Probably that his genetic relation shows that he comes from the six-fingered and six-toe priest kings or giants. Um. If you haven't looked into that on your own, I probably won't be touching on that in the, any of these series here. But there's, if you haven't heard it, go go look into it. Um, they find I've I have a lot of articles on my Twitter. If you want to find six toed giants, uh, double rows of teeth, it goes on and on. The hair of the image is dressed in thick curls on both sides of the head, reaching to the shoulders and brought down to the brow of the forehead. Careful examination of this clay figure revealed that it was merely the elaborate coffin of the real body and could be opened from the back. 
This was done with all possible care so as to not disturb the remains within, but a few handfuls of dust, dark brown and almost impalpable powder was all that was found. The crown is of thick red gold carved with minute but well-executed drawings representing battle scenes, triumphal marches, and other pictures, the meaning of which is somewhat misty. But in all the principal figure is that of a man with six toes on his right foot. The workmanship of the whole crown is very fine. The bird's head on top is a masterpiece worthy of Cellini. It holds in its mouth a magnificent shalshutis, or green diamond, valued by the Aztecs, which shows some attempts at lapidification. The girdle found is composed of plates of gold arranged like scales and very thin, so as to give with every movement of the wearer's body. On each of these plates, which is in the shape of a half ellipse, is engraved a figure or hieroglyphics conveying, however, no hint to their meaning in form. The image of what is presumably a god is made of clay combined with the preparation spoken of before and also burnt till thoroughly hardened. It represents a male being seated on a pedestal in a squatting posture its eyes squinting and grinning in hideous mirth, while both hands are placed over the ears as if to shut out sound. Now, that's an important image. Think about that, guys. A squatting figure, eyes closed, hands over the ears. A peculiar thing about this image is that its hair is represented as hanging down its back in one long plate like a Chinaman's, the Q. This hair figure um, I've talked a lot about over the years. Um, really important. You find it all over from Alaska to the Peruvians. Um, yeah, the Q. Look into that, you guys. It's a, it's a rabbit hole. It leads you all over the world. The figure is hollow, but contained only a half a dozen small black pebbles highly polished, and a somewhat larger stone of a dull gray hue. The coffin and these relics are to be donated to the State Museum of History and Archaeology at Tucson. No clue of any value as to what race the remains are to be ascribed can be found, but it is probable that it was one antedating the Atslan and even the mound builders and superior to both in knowledge of masonry, sculpture, and the working of metal.